My mom married a younger man because she wanted him to be the one to walk me down the aisle instead of my real dad. When I told her no, she skipped my wedding and cut me off. Now she crawled back to say sorry. Hey everyone. Some days ago, on the day of my wedding, or rather after everything was over, I had a terrible fight with my mom. It was all her fault, but when I talked to my grandmother lately, I made things worse for her by accident. That's why I came to ask if what I did was okay. My boyfriend and I have been together for 10 years, and we are both 24F. I love him very much, and we've been together since high school, so this wedding was very important to me. We planned this for months because we want it to be an event that people will remember. We got engaged last year. It was even possible for him and I to save a lot of money for this, but my mom didn't care at all. There was a divorce between my parents when I was six years old. After that, they shared care of me. Their relationship was terrible, and I honestly don't know how they managed to stay married for so long. They had been married for almost three years when I was born, and they stayed together for another six years before they finally split up. Most kids are sad when their parents say they're divorcing, but I was thrilled when they told me what was going on. In my opinion, it meant that they would no longer fight every day, and if they were happy, I would finally have a chance to be happy too. When I was a kid, I was okay with their choice. They shared care of me, so I spent half the month with my dad and the other half with my mom. I had praised too soon though, because I hadn't realized that they would still have to fight over me even though they were co-parenting. All they had to do was talk to each other and agree on what I was saying. They always talked badly about each other when they were with me, and I felt like I was stuck in the middle. Even after the split, my parents thought that the other person was still out to make their lives hard. As a child, I tried to understand, but by middle school, I had had enough. That's why I blew up while I was living with my dad. Again, he was fighting with my mom over me because she wanted to change the time she was going to take me back because she had something going on, and my dad didn't like it. I started to feel like a burden to both of them by that point, so I chose to run away. I was only 12 years old at the time. I went back to my room in the middle of the night, packed a few things, and left after hearing my dad argue with my mom on the phone, and then, of course, talking trash about her in front of me. Since I didn't have any plans and thought I would just wing it, I still remember that night because I don't think I have ever done anything that stupid since then. In the evening, I remember going to the bus stop, but there was only one scary guy there, so I left and went to a park nearby. I planned to go back to the bus stop as soon as I woke up in the morning. I was lucky that I fell asleep in the park and nothing bad happened. By morning the next day, my dad knew I wasn't there and called the police. I was then brought back home safely. My parents confronted me about what I was going through when they found out I had tried to run away from home. I told them that they had made me feel like a burden because they were always fighting because of me. That's when they promised to try to be nicer to each other for my sake because they had no idea that their behavior would make me do something so extreme. My dad kept his word after that and even when he fought with my mother, he wouldn't tell me about it so I wouldn't have to feel bad. But sometimes my mom would forget and start yelling at me about my dad. It was hard for me because I love both of my parents and don't think either of them was bad. I just think that they couldn't get along with each other, which made it hard for them to raise me. If you hate each other, it's not easy to raise a child together, but at least my dad did his best. As for my mom, well, let's just say she didn't take her words as seriously as my dad did, so I ended up getting closer to my dad. There was no change in how much I loved her. I just felt closer to my dad. I would still spend time with her when I went to her house when it was her turn to have me over, and we had a good time. And after I graduated from high school and went to college, my dad kept in touch with me more than my mom did. For these reasons, I would clearly say that I like my dad more than my mom. However, I have always loved and respected both of them equally. What happened lately, on the other hand, was just too much for me to handle, which is why I yelled at her. After they got divorced, my parents met other people, and my dad got married again about four years ago. He had been dating my stepmom for almost three years at that point, and things were serious between them. It made sense for him to get married again, since he had only been in a few relationships that didn't go anywhere before. My mom did things a little differently. 
After getting divorced, she would only have flings and not commit to anyone, even if the other guy was interested. I don't think less of her because she made that choice, which I respect. A couple of months or six months ago, she called me out of the blue and told me that she had been seeing a guy for a while and that they had chosen to get married. She wanted me to be at the wedding. All of this happened very quickly and I had no idea what was going on, but she told me she was sure about this guy and he seemed to be sure about her too. She had fun for a long time, but now she needed someone to be there for her. Jack, her husband's fake name, had only been dating my mom for four months before they got married. They seemed to love each other, but I wasn't sure if they were really together. He was almost 10 years younger than her, and they had only known each other for a short time. He was the one who suggested that they get married, and my mom kept talking about it at the wedding. I don't think she understood it wasn't what she thought it was, because it made things seem even stranger. She told me she was sure about her choice when I tried to talk to her about it, so I didn't think any further about it because I didn't want to seem harsh. And for what it's worth, he seemed pretty into her. That's why I went to the wedding with some of her close friends and family, and I even wished them the best. Even my dad was shocked when I told him about it. She had married someone she had only known for a few months, but it was already over. Once that was over, I was too busy planning my own wedding to worry about what was going on with my mom and Jack. They seemed happy enough. They've been married for six months now, but I haven't seen her much because she spends all her time traveling with him. I didn't mind that she didn't even show up to my wedding shower. She knocked on my door the night before my wedding, when we were all at the hotel, and said she had something very important to talk to me about. As soon as I let her in, she told me that she had heard me talking to my dad about Jack walking me down the aisle and other things. She thought I would ask Jack to do it at the rehearsal dinner, but I hadn't, even though I had asked her. I wanted both of my parents to walk me down the aisle because I thought that would work better for my family. I also didn't want my mom to feel left out, but I had no idea what she meant when she talked about Jack. I had no idea why she thought that since I had known Jack for a few months and I wasn't going to pick any old guy to walk me down the aisle on my wedding day as long as my dad was still alive. I made it very clear to my mom that Jack was not my stepdad, but just my mom's husband. I told her that I had no plans to ask Jack anything, and if she thought I was, she was clearly wrong. There was no way I could have even hinted that I would ask him, so I had no idea why she thought this all of a sudden. It was ridiculous, and to make things even worse, when she realized I was serious, and that I was going to have my biological father walk me down the aisle instead of her husband, she had a temper tantrum in my room and told me that she and Jack would not be going at all if that was the case. She apparently thought I was closer to her, which meant she thought Jack would be the one to walk me down the aisle with her. Another reason she thought I would ask Jack instead of my dad was that she thought her and her father walking me down the aisle would send the wrong message and make Jack feel a little nervous. She kept throwing fits and I didn't have time for that, especially the night before my wedding when I needed to sleep. I told her she and Jack could leave if they didn't want to go to the wedding and then I told her to leave my room so I could sleep. That was the end of the fight. My mother was nowhere to be found when I woke up the next morning. I told everyone close to me what had happened the night before, including my husband, my closest family, and my bridesmaids. I knew the rest of the day was going to be busy so I didn't even have time to think about her. I'm glad I didn't, because that would have probably ruined my mood. In the end, my dad and stepmom walked me down the aisle. Some people looked at me funny, but no one said anything because they knew I just wanted the day to go smoothly. My stepmom walked me down the aisle, which was fine with me because I like her. The wedding went well. Just an hour before the party was over though, my mom and Jack showed up at the reception. She looked very embarrassed, so I knew she was there to say sorry. I didn't mind her coming back for the reception because I had been drinking and was feeling very happy about getting married. I was also ready to forgive her. When she said she was sorry, I told her I accepted it and that she could go join the other people, but she stayed with us and told me she needed our help with something, and then she wanted us to do the wedding ritual again so she could experience it too. My husband and I were both shocked because it was such an odd request. We turned it down right away because we were not going to do that. Then she started asking us to do something, and even Jack looked worried. He told us that she really needed us to do this as a favor, because my grandmother would cut her off if she didn't. 
Both of my dad's parents went to the wedding, but my grandma, who was the only living parent of my mom, couldn't because she lives out of state and has health problems that keep her from going. I told her I would send her a video of the wedding, and while my mom and Jack were driving home, my grandmother decided to video call my mom so she could talk to me. That's when my mom realized she made a mistake. Now, she was afraid of what her mother would say about how she behaved at my wedding. That's why she wanted me to reschedule the service so she could be there, and my grandmother wouldn't be able to see what happened. Since the place was already paid for, the decorations were still up, and most of the guests hadn't left yet, my mom really believed that it was a good idea. I didn't back down. I told my mom that she had made the choice to leave the night before, which was her fault, and I wasn't going to blame her by rescheduling my wedding for no reason. She got into a fight with me and insisted that we do things her way, so that her mother wouldn't cut her off because this was a big deal. My grandmother is all about family and strong bonds between family members. The only reason she wasn't at my wedding was because she had been very sick for a long time. She would cut my mom off right away if she found out that she had done something so stupid. Also, I'm her only grandchild, and she loves me very much. Everyone knew that she would be very angry if she found out what my mom had done, which is why my mom was so eager to fix things before my grandma could find out. Not wanting to fight with my mom, my grandmother kept trying to video call her, so I called my maid of honor to take my phone from her. Before my mom could say or do anything, I FaceTimed my grandmother to talk to her and tell her the truth because I was sick of hearing her whine. Obviously, my grandmother was glad to see me. We talked about the wedding and how well it went, and then I got to the point. I told her what had happened with my mother and how she was trying to trick her by making me reschedule my wedding just for her. All of this happened in front of my mother, who was completely still. When I turned the phone around so my grandmother could see her, she had nothing to say. My grandmother yelled at her for six minutes before telling her she had really let her down. Then, as everyone had expected, she told my mom that she didn't need to come home for the holidays that year and that my grandmother wouldn't want to talk to her until I forgiven her. Only then would she even think about getting things right with my mom again. After that, my grandmother hung up and wished me luck. All of this while, my mom and Jack had been frozen in place and couldn't say anything. I thought they were going to yell at me after my grandmother hung up the phone, but luckily they didn't. After a couple of minutes, they just hung up and left. I thought that was great because if they had thrown a fit, it would have ruined my celebration. We chose not to talk about my mom and Jack for the rest of the day because we didn't want them to ruin our evening. After the wedding, we went home the next day. That night, my grandmother finally called me to talk about what had happened since the wedding. She tried to keep it short because she didn't want me to miss anything, like the celebration. She told me that she had been having a hard time with my mom for the past couple of months because she chose to marry Jack. But now that I was back, she could talk to me properly. Since they had only known each other for a few months, my grandmother was very against the idea from the start. It was only normal for her to think that my mom should not rush into a marriage like this, but my mom didn't listen to her. Afterward, they didn't talk for a few months after her wedding, because my grandmother told her it was a bad choice, which made my mom angry. After a few months, though, my mom apologized to my grandmother and went to see her with Jack to make things right. Jack, on the other hand, had been very distant around my grandmother, who had nothing against him and had been very nice to him. He always pretended to be too good to talk to his mother-in-law, and he turned down all of her attempts to get to know him. This meant she already didn't like him, and after that visit, she didn't like him any less. My mom had heard about it from her, and they had been arguing about it for a few months now. My mom kept saying the same thing. Her parents thought my dad was the right guy for her, but when she married him, he turned out to be the worst decision of her life because she couldn't stand him. Now, she felt like my grandmother wasn't giving Jack a real chance to fit in with the family because they hadn't been together in a long time. My grandmother insisted that she had given him a real chance and that she didn't have anything against him in particular. If it had been any other guy, she would have told him the same thing. It was too early to get married. But Jack seemed to have taken it personally and intentionally behaved badly around my grandmother, which made things worse between them. My mom and grandma's relationship had been getting worse over the past few months. 
The recent FaceTime call on the day of my wedding was the last straw for my grandma. She couldn't believe that my mom had decided to skip my wedding because I wouldn't let Jack walk me down the aisle. No one knew if Jack or my mom came up with the idea, but it didn't matter because she had chosen to miss my wedding and then tried to act like nothing had happened by making me read everything so my grandmother wouldn't find out. After we talked about it, we both realized that my mom had been acting strangely and badly toward both of us. We were no longer going to let her treat her own mom and her daughter like they were nothing. While we were talking on the phone, my grandmother and I decided that we would not talk to her for a couple of months, or until we felt like we could forgive her, or until she truly apologized to both of us. Things were too hot at the time. My grandmother sent a message to my mom on our behalf, telling her that she didn't want her to contact either of us until we were ready to talk to her, and she hoped that she would accept that. I thought that was a reasonable response after what had happened. But instead, my mom started to blame me for everything, and last night she sent me a bunch of mean texts. She thought it was my fault that even her own mother stopped talking to her, and she thought I had done it on purpose to make things worse for my mom. She told me that I could have told her several times that I didn't want to do the wedding again, but she wouldn't listen. Anyway, she thinks I went too far when I called my grandmother on the day of the wedding and told her everything on purpose to make things worse. She also said that I didn't need to talk to my grandmother about things because it made her angry at my mother because it seemed like I was trying to get people to turn against her. She didn't think it was fair that I was ganging up on my grandmother when I had no reason to do so. I think she's just whining again, but she could be right this time. Ida, why did you bring my grandmother into the fight with my mom? Update 1. Thanks to everyone who commented on my post with nice things to say. I stopped putting up with her and blocked her because I didn't need to bother her. She has been acting crazy and weird since she started seeing Jack, and I no longer need this in my life. After getting married, I want to have a happy and peaceful time. But my husband and I aren't even going to be here by the end of next week. I know it's a cliche to say that we're going to see the sights in Paris, but that's where we're going on our vacation, and I want to get rid of any bad thoughts before we leave. I don't want to have to think about how my mother is feeling and what she's going through when I'm trying to have fun. The best way to make sure that doesn't happen is to block her so that she can't talk to me, and I don't have to listen to what she has to say. Since the beginning of my life, I've done everything I could to show her the same love and respect I showed my father. I want her to feel included, because I would feel bad if she did, but I no longer do. It's not fair that she treats me badly since my dad has always been much nicer to me than she is to her. That seems like it would be wrong. All of my grandparents, my dad, and my husband have heard what she said and agree with my decision to block her. In fact, most of them think I should have done it a long time ago. It was almost the day of the wedding, but I waited because I didn't want to give up on having a good relationship with my mother. But now it has to be done. I'm not going to let her treat me badly and get away with it and I'm going to do that right now. Hi guys, this is update two. My mom seemed to remember that my husband and I were going on our vacation tomorrow, so I guess I told her at some point. Even though I don't know how to feel about what happened, I'm going to tell you about it because I feel like I need to, you know? In my last post, I said that I had stopped my mom everywhere so she couldn't get in touch with me. She sent me an email at my work address because I hadn't stopped her there because I didn't think she would use that address to get in touch with me. Anyway, I was going to delete the email at first, but my interest got the best of me, and I opened it and read it. It was weird for both my husband and me by the end of reading it together, because in the email, my mom told me how much she loved me and felt bad about how she had been mean to me lately. She also said that she only wanted Jack to walk me down the aisle because he insisted on it. She hadn't even suggested that they get married. In fact, she wanted to put it off for a few months so they could get to know each other better, but Jack eventually talked her into it. On top of that, Jack tricked my mom the night before the wedding into thinking that people would get the wrong idea if my dad walked me down the aisle with her. That's why he wanted to replace my dad with himself. She had always stood up for him because she loved him, but she also said she loved me and felt terrible about everything she had done because she felt trapped between Jack and her family. Now she understood how I felt as a child of divorce. She said Jack could be a little bossy sometimes, but she didn't mind that about him most of the time. 
But now that they had been talking for a few days, they both agreed that his controlling behavior was what caused so much trouble in the family for her. Thus, he promised to work on it and not make her feel bad about it. She also promised him that she would stand up for herself when she needed to and not always be his soft spot. When the email was over, she told us to enjoy our honeymoon to the best and that she would really like to get back in touch with us after we got back. But that's not what worries me. What worries me is that might not be the right guy for my mom. I remember reading in the email that she said they had agreed to work on it and that Jack had admitted he had control problems, but I'm not sure how much of that is true. What she said made it sound like Jack wasn't a good person and she was lying to protect him. We can't deal with this right now because my husband and I are going on our vacation tomorrow. After giving it some thought, we decided it would be best to let her handle it. I told my dad about it because I know that he's a good person and won't do anything bad to my mom, even if he says he doesn't like her. I also told one of her close friends about it, just to be safe. They've been friends since my mom was a kid, so I know she won't spread rumors. I'm sure she'll be taken care of even when I'm not here, so I can enjoy my vacation without stress. Hey, update three. That's why this report will be pretty short. My last post here was about four months ago, and at that time, my husband and I were on our honeymoon. We thought that whatever was going on with my mom and Jack would be taken care of when we got back. But when I tried to email my mom after I got back from our trip a couple of days later, I told her I would be happy to talk to her, but I never heard back. If I asked her friends, they said she seemed fine, so I thought there might not be anything really wrong. I forgot about it because I had a lot of work to do. Following two weeks, I heard from my mom again. She said she was grateful that I had told her friend that I had questions about Jack, since she hadn't been brave enough to do so herself. I was right. Jack was not the right person for her. He had been trying to keep her from talking to anyone by telling her to block everyone. He finally told her that he didn't want her to hang out with her childhood friend, because, in his opinion, she was troublesome and nosy. When my mom canceled plans to meet her almost four times in a row, her friend realized that something wasn't right, and that there was also that email I had talked to her about. Her friend finally talked to her about it two weeks ago, and my mom broke down and told her everything. She couldn't take it anymore because Jack was being so mean to her. So her friend chose to stand by her, and the two of them filed for divorce together. Since then, she has been living with her friend, because she ended the lease on her old apartment and moved in with Jack after they got married. My mom called to thank me for being there for her and telling her friend about him and what she had said in her email so that her friend could get a better idea of what was going on. She didn't think anyone would have known she was having a hard time otherwise. Anyway, I'm glad she's leaving now and I hope things get better for everyone. In fact, this news shocked even my grandmother, but we're all trying to be there for my mom and hope that things work out.